Hey, Zeal Brothers here once again when I make another video. This one is going to be about, <sighs> it's an attitude that I've seen in churches too often. And it's this idea that people bring a volunteer mindset to church. Now let's talk about church. And when you look at the church as an organization, the government will view the church as a volunteer organization or a non-charitable organization. And it will look at the, the pastor as staff and it will look at everybody else as a volunteer. And a lot of people approach church in that fashion. What they'll do is they'll come to church with a volunteer's mindset. And what's a volunteer's mindset? A volunteer's mindset is I'm coming and my attendance is good enough. And it kind of builds on the idea that we had in the video yesterday when I had to boot a young brother out of church. And some people were commenting, and, they, and, and one of my friends commented, and they made a good point, and they asked the question, hey, some people come, and aren't we kind of happy that they at least they came? And let me answer that question, because there's a there's layers to it, right? On one sense, I'm, I'm happy when I invite somebody to an event. I'm happy that they, they attended that event. And I'm with you on that. I'm happy when people attend, but here's the thing. The point is not attendance. There's a lot of people out there who think evangelism is getting people to come to church. If you get somebody to come to church and that's all, you know, that doesn't do anything for their soul. That doesn't do anything for your church. It may make you feel better in a moment, but in fact, you have done nothing. So I get it. I'm happy when somebody comes and I hope that it will lead to something in the future, but them just coming is not enough. So we have this voluntary mindset when we come to church. Well, we think if we came, we've done our part. If we do something, it's better than doing nothing. And I get it, right? I get it. We want people to do something, but here's the thing. While I might agree with you, God doesn't. Let's think about what God's standard is. God's standard is, and it talked about, Peter talked about it in the church, and he said this, the one who speaks should speak as the oracle of God, to the one who serves to serves with the power that God supplies. Now, let's think about what that means. If I'm speaking as an oracle of God, that literally means I speak with the voice of God. I'm empowered to speak the words of God. I have the eloquence that is gifted to me by God. And we know what an oracle of God means. That means that somebody who speaks has to speak with power, has to speak with passion, has to speak with effort, has to be thinking about what they're saying. So when they speak, they convey the spirit by which God spoke. We understand that. But the second part of it, we try to ignore. The one who serves, just serves with the power that God supplies. How much power does God supply? infinite power. So when you serve and you simply say, ah, I'm just going to put in a little bit of effort, you're not doing God justice because is that all he supplied? Remember, your effort needs to be proportional to the power that God gives. And so if you're giving a half-butted effort, you're saying that God didn't supply you with that much power. He That's all he supplied you with. And that's what a lot of people are doing at church. We got a lot of people at church who come to church and they just come to church and sit down in a pew and they think they've done something. And let me tell you, you have not done anything. You simply have absorbed from the church, but you have not yet given to the church. And you can sit in the pew and because you understand more week after week, you think you're growing. But I have to tell you, you are not growing nearly as much as you think you do. You are like the person who watches videos about relationships and think that they have gotten better in their relationships and are not in a relationship. It's easy to think that you have grown in something when you're not actively doing it. The idea of growth is attractive. And so you can fool yourself into thinking that you're growing when you're not really growing. We had this problem in our church. We've been asking some guys to join different ministries and they keep saying that they're not going to do it. And the reason they're not going to do it is because they don't want to put that effort forward. And one person even said, well, do you want me to um, do you want me to serve in such a way that I wouldn't be happy doing what I'm doing? And here's the thing. When you say it in that term, what you really mean is. Do you really think that God will want me to do something I don't feel like doing? The answer to that is always going to be yes. 
Do I always feel like being patient? Do I always feel like studying for my sermon? Do I always feel like greeting people at church? Do I always feel like being loving? Do I always feel like holding my temper? We don't always feel like being good people. Sometimes we want to be a scumbag. You know what? It feels good to be a scumbag. It feels good to vent your anger every once in a while. It feels good to cuss somebody out. That's why people do it. Let's be real. The reason that people don't want to serve God is because it feels better not to. You think it feels good to be faithful to your wife when somebody walks past you and you know you could get away with it. It doesn't feel good in that moment. You feel like you're missing out. It doesn't feel good not to cheat on your taxes when you know you could make him having more money, get a bigger TV, have a bigger house. It doesn't feel good to be honest on your job when you messed up. It doesn't feel good to do good every moment. There's a lot of people out there who are pushing this prosperity gospel. And the idea is that when you do good, you'll feel good. Oftentimes, the feeling good is delayed. I'll put it to you like this. When I was younger, I had already decided to serve God. And so I had to turn away from sexuality. I had to. And lots of people used to call me gay. They always was calling me that. And what happened was, after a while, a lot of those guys had kids out of wedlock. And they would come to me later and they would regret those kids. And they would say, I wish I was like you. When I was younger, I didn't drink. And a lot of people to this day, and I still don't drink. I took a vow. A lot of people came to me and they say, man, I wish I could be like you. And I will always say to them, you can be. But the reason they don't want to be like me is because it is hard to be like that. It's hard to make a choice to say, no, I'm not going to feel good in this moment. I'm not going to be buzzed. I'm not going to have a sexual experience. I'm going to say no to myself. And ultimately what Christianity is is saying no to yourself. But we have taken Christianity to saying yes to myself. I will please God when it pleases me. And if you're doing that, who's God? So when you come to church, no, you coming is not enough. Your attendance alone does not please God. If it's the first step of you serving God, then it does. But your attendance alone, stopping there, is not good enough. And we should expect better. Especially when we're preaching and teaching God's word. I should expect better. Now, especially me. I'm not being paid by the church. The least you can do is pay me some respect and some attention. That's the least you can do. And that's not too much to ask. And that's where we have to get that manly mindset. And the people who ask the question about, well, shouldn't we be happy? When they attend, a lot of times the people who are asking this, they're asking out of an attitude of fear. And what I mean by fear is you're saying, well, we don't want to make them mad. We don't want to lose these people. And what is that? That's a mindset of fear. I have a mindset of faith. I believe that if I hold people to godly standards, if God has called them, they'll rise to those standards. If God has not called them, then they'll expose themselves. And at the end of the day, God has called me to keep being better and better. I do not believe that God has called anybody in the church to perfection. Let me restate that. I do not believe that the church itself will ever be perfect. God has called us to perfection. But I don't think anybody at the church will be perfect. And so when people in the church say they left because somebody addressed them imperfectly, that's a false that is a false reason to leave the church because no one will ever address you perfectly. Part of being the church is accepting the imperfection of others because you understand that we are all sinful. And just like people got to accept your crap, you got to take their crap. That's just the way it is. And we're going to make this church real. Sometimes you have to put up with bad behavior from people just like you want the pastor to put up with bad behavior from you. And that's the real. So Zill Brothers, we're going to keep it real. I hope you guys keep it real.
Go to your church. Keep it real. Be at your home. Keep it real. Men, keep it real. Everybody, be honest with yourself. That's what I mean by keeping it real. I don't mean just sitting there and just saying random, gritty sounding stuff. I'm talking about taking the time to be honest with yourself. And it will take time, but you will see the benefits over time.